All right, we have come full circle on the Okta hack. Let me help you connect the dots. After following Okta's handling of the hacking incident, the Okta customers now have zero trust in Okta. But Lapsus ransomware gang announced that they had super user access to Okta. To prove their unfettered access to Okta's backend, they published a bunch of screenshots on their Telegram channel. The screenshots show that hackers gained access to Okta.com backend and several SaaS providers like Jira and Salesforce that Okta uses to run their services. Let me back up a little bit. So Okta is a San Francisco based identity and access management provider. So they offer services like single sign on or SSO and multi-factor authentication or MFA to thousands of enterprise customers today. They are a leader in Gartner's magic quadrant for IAM, like identity and access management with over 30% market share. They compete with the likes of Microsoft, Ping Identity and OneLogin. So what does that all mean? A big chunk of the business world today uses Okta as their identity provider. So their hack is a big news and a shock for everyone. Today, Okta has over 100 million users on the platform and these users access millions of applications representing billions of application identities managed by Okta. So there is yet another wrinkle beyond that in this chapter and that is the identity and Okta are at the forefront of Zero Trust Network Access or ZTNA. Anyhow, this is how I look at this breach. So number one, scope of the breach. Number two, Cytel and who else has access or had access to Okta's backend. And finally, Okta's handling of this incident and what it means for the cybersecurity industry. Let's talk. Hi, my name is Afak. I hope you're doing well. Let me break it down for you. If we were to believe Okta, they say it all transpired over a five day period between January 16th and 21st this year in 2022. The screenshot lapses published online were taken from a computer used by a CITL employee, like a third party um, Okta contracts with for customer support. The hacker obtained remote access to the CITL support engineer's computer using RDP. The machine was then logged into Okta at the time of compromise. Again, if we take Okta's for their word, Lapsus made an unforced error apparently by adding a new MFA factor and trying to log in from a new location. Cytel support engineers helped Okta with the resetting of passwords and MFA factors for users, but Okta says they cannot unmask a user password. Now, if you look at Lapsus, they are not your typical ransomware gang. They don't encrypt data, they steal data and then extort their victims. Just for context, this group stole about 37 gigabytes of Microsoft Azure DevOps server source code. They're no joke. In essence, if we were to believe Okta's version of the story, they were not hacked directly, so the damage is limited. On the other hand, the story may be just getting started if you look at the Lapsus modus operandi. Cytel is the only entity named in the hack and they are a third party who hired another third party, a forensic firm to conduct the hack uh, analysis. Cytel employees had access to several tools to carry out their work, including Okta's instances of Jira, Slack, Splunk, and Ring Central accounts and support ticket through their Salesforce. Cytel's initial forensic report with Okta did not include the screenshot that the hackers made a public a few days ago. So this is pretty bad. And my question is how many more Cytel like contractors Okta works with that we don't know. Okta has poorly handled this incident. They are a public company, uh, but they did not disclose this incident in their annual report published earlier this month. They failed to push Cytel to come clean on their forensic findings either. The initial hack happened mid of January and Okta says they received the first report from Cytel on March 10th. Two months is a long time in the cybersecurity world that we live in today. Now, large 
Okta customers such as Cloudflare have already announced their plans to look for Okta alternatives. Even if we accept Okta's narrative that exposure was limited, it still does not explain the delay and a complete kind of cover up over that two months period. It just does not instill confidence. Okta is not JBS Foods, right? They are a big, well known cybersecurity company and they, they can't just say we made a mistake. Here's what I think where we go from here. The fallout from the breach is just getting started. Identity is central to everything, including zero trust, and Okta has more than 100 million users. So let that sink in. I think Okta customers are furious for the right reasons. Their investors have voted in also by bailing out on the stock, like stock is down over 20%. I believe Okta faces a long road back to January 15th. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here on Monday and Friday. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.